Well, mm. when I started, when I fell, run it back. When I broke with the ball, I saw the ball. I saw it pop up in the air. I went to cut back for it and I fell really unathletically. And I didn't keep, I didn't take my eye off of it. I just kept watching. I'm like, there's no shot that's going to fall right in my hands. I'm watching it. I'm like, it's definitely going to fall right here. I stick my hands out, pops me in the helmet, and fall right in my hands. If you notice, I had to take a second to adjust it and be like, dang, dang, I really caught this. Hit your helmet first. Yeah, I hit my helmet first. So it's definitely, definitely something I won't forget anytime soon. God bless me on that one. <laughs> but you, I mean, you had the presence of mind. You were like three, four inches off the ground. Like you kept your hand to make sure the ball didn't hit the ground, right? Heck yeah, I did. I knew, I knew if that ball fell that close to me. I knew I wasn't gonna let that thing touch the ground. Everybody else was getting interceptions and picks. I looked like I stunk because I was the only one that didn't return it for a touchdown. PJ didn't. Very yeah, much. but I, I'm talking about my, at that point in the game, I was the only one in my room. So. <laughs> And now I can't now I can't make fun of everybody and say I was the only one with a touchdown this year, <laughs> which is good. Which is a good good problem to have. So this is a, a milestone game for you. Your 60th game at Pitt. So you. Uh, I didn't realize that until you said that. I think I told you a while back. Yeah, you, you told me a couple 60. weeks ago that like I was, I was on pace for like. The record is 64. Cal Adam minus. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's not a bad. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna try and beat. I'm definitely gonna beat Cal's record. So. Talk, talk about some of the memories of those 60 games. They're a lot of fun. They're all, they're all a lot of fun. Uh, each one has its own special place in my heart, obviously. It's a, it's a heck of a university, a heck of a tradition that we have here. And I'm just playing game by game, hoping to make memories of each one. Along the way, you guys have had some interesting matchups against teams that run RPOs. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you've developed, we just talked to Randy about it, like kind of over the past three, four years, maybe like developed and either adjusted how you defend it or the players just get a better sense. Are, are you just sort of familiar with it now? And he said that. He said you guys just see it a lot more than maybe you did three years ago. Are you just more comfortable defending that kind of offense now? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I think it's a, a testament to our coaching staff and how they how they teach us to play ball and how they teach us an understanding of these are the holes in the defense that someone might exploit and these are the calls that we're going to make to change it up and move move that weak point around throughout our secondary. So um, that's definitely has a lot to do with it. And then the, the presence of mind that we have is, as different as different rooms, obviously understand this is this is our responsibility. This is we have what we have to this is what we have to uh, have to take care of. And so obviously a couple years ago everybody will remember Western Mission. I think that was a big wake up call um, as far as how we need to defend the RPO, what we need to do and how we need and how we need to execute in order to defend it effectively. So We've taken that to heart. We've taken all that teaching to heart and really put it forth in the past couple of years to, to really perfect what we're doing and how we defend the RPO. What did it mean, like, I mean, you said you felt bad that you were only like two, the only linebacker that was returned for a return for a touchdown. But I mean, what, what's it like to see every all the linebackers just? It seems like anything that needs to be done, you guys are everywhere. Line up. What's it like to see you guys just execute so well? It's a beautiful thing. Um, seeing seeing your Really, our entire defense run relentlessly to the football is something that's um, that we take that we take very very seriously here at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, knowing like knowing that defense is very much an effort based thing, right? The, the, the ability to fly to the ball, run to the ball, and good things are going to happen for your defense. Whether you're, someone's punching with the ball and the ball pops out, we're we're on it because there's 11 hats around the ball compared to the offense's seven, right? So that's really. What we're, that's what we love to see, and that's how we try to attack every day. Like our, like my room, especially that we love, we love the game. Yeah, you can tell, you can tell the way that the way that we play on every on every game day that we love what we do, and we take it very seriously. And that's why that's why we we've, we've been effective this year thus far. I feel like all three levels of the defense are maybe playing more cohesively now than they were beginning of the year, breaking some of these starters. Absolutely, uh, that's. That's what happens when you have, we have a lot of new young faces on the team um, and on, on our starting and our starting units and lineup. So the ability to be comfortable with one another to know that that build, to build that trust as the as the year goes on to know that if I do this, someone else is going to do their job is very 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 important. But on the defense, especially ours, where it's we're so aggressive that um, you need to know that your brother's in the right spot at the right time every time. So um, I feel like that's what's really grown made us more, more cohesive is understanding that 
we're all going to do our job effectively and correctly at Athletic. You're the green dot guy, right? I am the green dot guy. Uh, and, and Coach Ban and I have just giving you instructions. Yeah, we're getting uh, we're getting calls, checks, um, different uh, just down distance situations like that, um, just in my in my head. So I obviously I have to set the front and stuff like that. So uh, I'm more I have a position that requires a lot of communication. So the ability to not have to look to the sideline, the ability to be able to look forward and dissect the defense or you know, dissect the offense as it's breaking the huddle or approaching the line of scrimmage um, is very, very, very helpful. You guys are all obviously in the right position a lot of times on Saturday. How important is that technology to getting you guys you know, know exactly where to line up? It's, it's very, it's, I, it's being as I had, I was there before the green dot and I know what it was like to have to look over the sideline, especially in hurry up offense and I'm sitting there like, okay, where's the call, where's the call, where's the call, where's the call, there's the call. Oh crap, they're snapping the ball. Like that, that was that was the point before the green dot. Now that the green dot's there, I don't have to look over here, look over the sideline in order to get the call. I can still I can stare straight forward. I get it in my ear and then I can effectively give everybody else the assignment or the check that we need. Would you like to evolve someday when you can have a conversation with the, with the, the coach? There's a couple times I wish I could say something back through the uh, <laughs> through the headset, but um, I'm glad right now I'm just I'm glad that we have what we have because it's definitely something that's very useful, and uh, from my understanding, it's the same thing they have in the NFL. So that's a, that's a very good tool for guys that are going to have the green dot, hopefully in the future. Is Coach Man like on the sidelines during games? Yeah, absolutely. So what are, like, what are those moments like uh, when you're trying to adjust or trying to make a change on the sidelines? What kind of conversations are there? Is it a conversation or is it Coach Man like telling you what? what you're doing? It's a convers. It's ob it's obviously a conversation. Uh, with the evolution of iPads on the sideline now, it's. A little bit easier to understand, like what we're talking, what we're talking about, or what we may have seen. Like cause sometimes your eyes see, you know, you're on the field, you may think it was pow it was power when really it was counter. So like the understanding of this is this was a formation, like you can literally see it play out in front of you. Like oh okay, I didn't see that guard pull on this all the time. But like seeing that, Coach Manlike can effectively tell us, like okay, this is the formation this time. Next time, this is, this is how we're going to adjust to it. So. Um, that's one thing that it's, it is a, most definitely a conversation. It's not him sitting there just screaming at us. Like there, obviously there, there's a coach-player relationship, but sitting sitting there on the sideline, he he's been in our shoes. He understands that you may you may see like you see a little, you see a lot, you see a lot, you see little. Is, is a lot of is something we say a lot a lot of the time, which means if you're not focused on one little thing, you're going to miss the big picture entirely. So, you, uh, you Jerry likes to point out how many games you've played here. It's, Six years, I mean, you've been a part of this program. This is the sixth year. In terms of linebacker groups, you know what I mean, as you think back over the last five years, I mean, obviously 2021, you guys had a pretty good group with, with all those guys. But I mean, is, is this one the, the best one you've been a part of here? I think this is the best one because this is the one I'm a part of right now. Um, over the years, we've had a lot of great linebackers. We've, a, we've had a lot of guys that have had their shot to play at the next level. Um, we have guys that are currently still playing at the next level. Um, I think over the years we've had we've had just different different styles of play. Um, this is definitely one of the more aggressive linebacker linebacker groups that you've probably seen in the past. Um, we uh, we definitely we fire we fire off the ball. We, we're coming downhill with the intent to the intent to wreak some havoc. So that's something that's obviously very very fun to see. Um, it's very 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 fun to be a part of. Like our our room is always gonna is always gonna have fun. We're, our goal at the end of the day. Our goal is to win a football game too, though. So we're going to be we're going to be on each other. We're going to make sure that hey, if you didn't do your job this last this last play, we're gonna, the difference between a smack on the butt and a pat on the back is a few inches. So we're going to make sure that you know you either did a good job or a bad job. And you got to get it fixed or keep it up. So definitely a fun crew to be a part of, though. We'll do a couple more. What does um, <clears throat> SMU concern you? What are you most concerned with from SMU? They're a very athletic crew. They, uh, they're obviously, I believe, they're the number one rushing offense in the ACC. Um, they're very effective at what they do. They're very effective um, getting a getting up tempo and trying to get you on your heels a little, heels a little bit as, as they try and move the ball down the field. Um, so we just have to prepare diligently for that and understand that we need to get home, get the call, and execute the call at a very quick tempo and a very and very effective manner consistently. And that's that's what will help us um, get off the field and get our offense. They go as fast as you guys go. Your offense. Um, it's hard to say, obviously, but uh, all right, but 
close. I'd say it's close. They're about they're tempo about 50 50 percent of the time. Mm -hmm. So it'll be it'll be a fun it'll be a fun game to watch for those that have ACC network. You took on the game the Sharks prior to the season. The way you guys are playing, also seeing the fans like hold up inflatables and some people dressed as sharks. What's it like just seeing the fans like race you guys like that? It's something that I haven't been a part of until this year, so that's something that's really that's really really neat to see. You see, if one of our guys gets a sack or a TFL or interception, you look back in the student section and having the entire student section is throwing up the shark sign. So like that's that's obviously something really cool to see. Our student section does a phenomenal job too. Like for, for everybody that's at the game, you know they get loud. That playing at that end of that end of the stadium is one that's it's hard it's hard to get a snap count off in that end of the stadium. So that's it's something that. Is definitely a highlight of the season, seeing all, seeing all of them get into it like they are.